Hello and welcome to SAR Histories, where on the channel today we will be visiting a place steeped in history and folklore, Nottingham Castle. After William the Conqueror's decisive victory at the Battle of Hastings in 1066, the Normans took control of England, though William faced insurrection and the North was especially rebellious. Nottingham was strategically the best place to base power in the North Midlands and in 1068 a Motton Bailey was constructed and Nottingham's long history began. Nottingham was of such strategic importance that William the Conqueror appointed his trusted friend William Peveril as constable. Peveril's heirs continued to be constables until 1155. Control of the castle then passed to the newly crowned Henry II. Henry II was a regular visitor to the castle and after a failed attempt to capture the castle in 1174 which led to the town being burnt, Henry decided upon improvements that could withstand new siege techniques. Records from the Royal Exchequer reveal how Henry II spent £1,800 over 18 years on building work at Nottingham Castle. The average entire annual revenue of the Crown at this time was only about £10,000. In 1365, Edward III made further improvements to the castle, adding a new tower on the west side of the Middle Bailey and a new prison under the High Tower. By 1600, the castle ceased to be a royal residence. Following the outbreak of the English Civil War, the castle was already in a semi-ruined state, but it was from Nottingham that Charles I raised his standard to rally an army of royalists. In 1651, just two years after Charles I's execution, the castle was raised to prevent it from being used again. Little of the original castle survives, other than the gatehouse and parts of the ramparts. What we see today is the rebuilt palace of William Cavendish, the original being burnt down by rioters in 1831. What I liked about the castle's grounds is the picture boards that give you a view of the old castle. You will find these dotted about and are well worth viewing to gain a sense of the castle's past. The 
The caves under the castle are artificial, having been carved out of the soft sandstone rock by prospective dwellers. In fact, Nottingham City has more man-made caves than anywhere else in Britain, making the caves a site of vast importance to the heritage of Britain. During the Second World War, these caves served as an air raid shelter and you can still see the metal strips on the ceiling where electric lights once were. These caves are an upcharged tour of which you only get to see three caves, one of which is a brick cellar. The tour guide was great and gave a detailed history, but I felt it was rushed as you only get half an hour in the caves. I feel this should be included in your entrance tickets for the castle, as I don't feel that it offers enough for an additional cost. What little time I had in the caves was enjoyable and I liked seeing the Norman arches, tool marks and names scratched into the stone. But if you think that the caves are full of crystals like elsewhere, you'll be disappointed. The mansion is now used as a museum and art gallery which was closed in 2018 for renovation and reopened on the 21st of June 2021 costing 30 million. Here you will see Nottingham's fine and decorative art collections, galleries on history and archaeology of Nottingham and the surrounding areas. The Rebellion Gallery has some fascinating objects which you can spend some time gazing at. My particular favourite is Lady Lucy Hutchinson's memoir which is left open for you to read. There is also a display of the convicted Luddite rebels who went about destroying machinery through protest which is of great interest. There are many things on display here and the area can get quite busy, but it is intriguing to look upon the objects that witness the events of their time. It is evident from this gallery of Nottingham's rebellious past and connection to the royalist cause 
during the Civil War, and it is easy to lose time here. My favourite part of the castle is the Regimental Museum of the Sherwood Foresters. The regiment was formed in 1881 and in 1870 merged with the Worcestershire Regiment to form the Worcestershire and Sherwood Foresters Regiment, which then merged with the Cheshire Regiment and the Staffordshire Regiment to form the present Mercian Regiment. It is a great museum to explore for any military enthusiast. It offers a chance to see weapons, uniforms and medals from the different eras. There is also an opportunity to lift a modern soldier's pack, which is surprisingly heavy, and the pack from a soldier from World War I. Though this museum is only small, I could have easily spent hours reading all the information on display, which gives great insight into the objects on display here. The art gallery houses some beautiful objects which you can spend a lot of time admiring. For me, the best pieces here are the ancient Greek amphoras. There are many fine paintings here also, alongside other great objects which catch the eye, and you're sure to spend time here in intrigue and wonder. Nottingham is closely linked to the infamous outlaw Robin Hood. The castle has an upcharge Robin Hood Adventures which offers interactive games and a retelling of Robin Hood. The retelling of Robin Hood is done through large digital screens that are all around you, making you feel fully emerged into the medieval world. But as with too many things, it is marred by political correctness. Where the early medieval period was more diverse than what we are today, but more inappropriately was when they showed all the different Robin Hoods from the Bards. Nearly half were black, something which the Bards do not say and therefore is not historically accurate. There are also games here which are fully interactive where you can fight with a quarterstaff and try your skills at archery. Though being very enjoyable you don't get a lot of time especially if you're part of a big group so don't expect everyone to be able to have a go. You only get a 30 minute slot to both watch the retelling and play the games and for me this is not enough time to make you feel it is worth paying extra for and the experience I felt was rushed so that the next group could enter.
As a whole, I enjoyed my visit to Nottingham Castle, but I left feeling a little disappointed. For such a historical place, it felt too modern and almost a betrayal to it, the castle's past. It is worth a visit if you live close enough and are looking for something to do for a morning or afternoon, but I would not want to travel far for it. In the future, I hope they either drop charging for the Caves and the Robin Hood adventures, or at least make them better value for money. Now that I have been, I probably won't return as there is much better historical places for your money, but if you're unsure, you should go anyway and make up your own mind. If you have enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. Until then, goodbye.